so um, in the previous video, you walked us through Firebase in general, and we'll look at all these features or the most important features when it comes to building your app. And one super important feature, obviously, is the database where we well, can store our data, read it, and so on. And when we talk about the database, we got like a basic structure here, for example, from the app we saw in the previous video where we could push our messages into the database. And then it would, because I had this as a reference, here when we pushed it, I referenced messages. Mm -hmm. It would create this messages node and simply add all these messages with these IDs, right? And that's a super simple structure, obviously. So here, if we uh, would, would draw this as one example structure, and basically we have like the, the, the messages here, and then obviously our different IDs, which are cryptic strings like, uh, like this one mm -hmm. below that as messages. Um, now, the thing is, since we can structure it like JSON, there is the idea or the danger that we create super deeply nested yeah. structures, especially if we would imagine we had not just messages, but we had different rooms and maybe a message could be part of separate rooms, mm -hmm. then you could get a much more complicated structure. So what are some common pitfalls or things we should avoid? Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing uh, when you're thinking about building a data structure in Firebase is you have to think about how is your data going to be consumed. So pitfalls and issues come from not really general rules as much as how are you going to consume this data in your app. And, and there's issues there. So like this message is, is great right now if we're only dealing with uh, you know, a list of text where each user just you know, sends, you know, this is text, this is a message, and just stacks up. As soon as you add complexity to that, you have to start thinking about how am I going to use this data. So an example would be if each message had a sender. Yeah. So I send a message and it shows like my profile image or uh, my name next to it. And the immediate question with Firebase is, do you just tack that under? Here, I can show yeah. you. So would you just tack that under this, uh, this client? So like, all right, under this we'll have a, a name and you know, like a photo URL. Yeah. So that would be completely fine in a lot of situations. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. We have huge chats that just have this. But you can imagine a situation where I'm a user, maybe I changed my profile photo. Now every single message I've ever sent is gonna have that old photo URL. So this is a case where it becomes a judgment call. Yeah. What do you wanna do? Do you want to store this name and this photo under each message? Or do you wanna store, alternatively, uh, if it's in, you know, another crazy ID, under that, just their UID? and then look up that data. Yeah. And both of these are reasonable. The UID one works better if you have fewer people in the chat. If it's a conversation between me and you, that's only two UIDs to look yeah. up. If it's a Twitch chat and you have 100,000 yeah. people talking in it, it probably makes more sense to do this. Because not only are those messages more shortly lived, but they uh, have a lot more people, so it'd be more trips to pull out all the data uh, yeah. from the profiles. So each one can work. It just depends on how you're using it. And this is a general theme with Firebase is how am I consuming the data and structuring in a way that it makes sense when you want to pull it back out. Yeah, and you can maybe do like a half mirror that you store the name and the ID. So do you have the name right available if you want to display that next to the message? Also have the ID if you need to reach out and pull some extra yeah. information. Maybe you can, you click yeah. on a message and... You can definitely do that. And something like that is a great case where profile load, uh, photos tend to take a second to load anyway. Yeah. So an extra extra round trip that only takes as long as a Firebase round trip takes that we saw was yeah. not long. Uh, that on top of a normal image loading is hardly noticeable. Yeah. So that's a completely reasonable route. And, and that's why these priorities of what data should I store where, what should I copy or denormalize, comes down to what you care about in your app. Mm -hmm. that, that makes a lot of sense. And I think one other thing which is important to keep in mind is if you have very complex structures with a lot of nesting, you fetch all the data every time you... you you basically query it or you have this on listener yeah. and you get all the data and you just want to get all the messages, you get everything which is nested below yes, there too, right? Exactly. And this is one of the general themes with Firebase is that if you're loading one thing, you're loading all of its siblings as well. So an example of that is if I wanted to load data, if I loaded at slash messages, I would get all of the children. Yeah. I, I wouldn't generally get this one and this you know, th this first record and the second record and no other records. You could do that, you could pluck those two out if you really wanted to, 
but that's not really how it's set up. Mm-hmm. So you're not only loading, you know, the entire list of messages, but like you're saying, you're loading everything under every single one. So you can limit this. You can say only give me 10 messages, give me the last 10, give me the ones that have this exact field or tag or something on them. So there are, uh, you know, extra things you can do there. But in general, you have to realize that when you're loading data, you're loading all of it. You're not plucking fields or things like that. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so if you're coming from maybe a SQL background, mm-hmm. you, you have like obviously a lot of tables and connect them via IDs typically. And as you, you already mentioned, kind of you can store the UID here too to basically rebuild this when it's needed or when it makes sense. Mm-hmm. But it's also important to take advantage of this like MongoDB-like structure or the, the JSON structure, right? To, yeah. To, to, yeah, as you said, make a judgment call, nest what makes sense to nest. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Storage is cheap, right? Yeah. Like, I can copy a name a hundred thousand times and it will cost me functionally nothing. Yeah. It's extremely, extremely cheap to do. Uh, but what is more expensive is loading that onto the client. How many times am I going to pull down that same name? Yeah. Things like this do come into concern. But in general, like storing the same the same thing a bunch of times is very cheap, yeah. and it's a lot more expensive to pull things down on the client and do complicated connections and transforms. It's generally easier to just write the same data again because it just probably isn't going to need to be changed. But in case you do have to change it, like you can use a different structure. But yeah. you know, it works really well to do like name photo a ton of the time. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, how would you just to have another example? How would you, for example? possibly structured if you had like um, chat rooms with messages in there and then we also have users so could you mm-hmm. give us an example for that maybe yeah so if you're having like a user profile you're talking about like, yeah, so, yeah. yeah so user profile. we probably want to set this up so we have a, a high level uh, like two they're not really tables but two collections of, of a type of thing so an example of that would we would have uh, like rooms up here and under that, we would have room IDs, and those would be those crazy you know, yep. ABCs. And then under that, we'll have all the messages for that room. But we wouldn't want to store them just like this, where it's you know exactly under the unique key. We'd want to do something where we have probably messages under that. And then under messages, we'll put in each individual ID as they come in and each individual mm-hmm. message. So, you know, hi, whatever, hello. And so by doing this, uh, we give us a little bit more flexibility because this room has that unique ID. That's not a human readable name. That's not anything interesting. Yeah. So we could also have next to messages, we could have like title. And title could be, you know, the, the name of that chat or uh, the name of that room. So if I come by later, I can load at this level. I can say room slash ABC. Mm-hmm. And I will get back all the messages along with the title, along with any other metadata or anything else interesting I put down here. Mm-hmm. In the future, I can come along and I can say, all right, I really only want that room's title. So I can go rooms, this ABC key, and just the title and just get that. But most of the time, I'm going to be loading all of this data as, as one group. Now, if we had another structure, like users that you were talking about, user profiles or you know, photos and URLs, things like that, we could have another top-level collection just called like users. Mm-hmm. And under that, instead of using crazy unique IDs, we would use their UID as the key. Mm-hmm. So now when a user signs in or when a UID is referenced by a message, we know we can look at users slash their unique ID. And under that will be you know their name, profile image, everything like that. And this mm-hmm. is the second big thing about structuring Firebase data is that you're not only building uh, for how you're consuming it, but you're building your structure in a way that you know where to look. Yeah. Which is a really interesting concept to me, because the idea that your data is getting pushed into an array, it's, a, it's basically lost. You don't know where it is, you don't know what key is associated with it. But if you can, if you're building up this path, you know that any UID you have, if you look at users slash that UID slash the name, that will be that person's name. Yeah. And so it's reliable, so you don't even have to load data from the server, you can just say, I know where to look to pull this out and render it into my app. Yeah. That, that That's really interesting. and. Um, we get that URID from basically Firebase. Again, if we use authentication, we get the back and we create a user. Mm-hmm. And then this, this is maybe important. We have to do that part on our own, though. We need to push the data to the real-time database. Yep. We can't leverage the Firebase authentication. You, we can't store it in the same database as email and password. Right? Yeah, no, they're completely separate because like email and password, we don't want you to possibly expose those yeah. password hashes, right? right. So they're com- completely separate. But there's absolutely no reason you can't use a UID yep. like this or even use it somewhere else. 
So you can imagine a situation where users had rooms. Like I, as a user, have my own list of conversations. Mm -hmm. So you could put another node in here where you go rooms, and then under that, like in between here, put their UID. And then under each UID, you have a list of my own conversations, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, you have you have a ton of options for, for how to do that. And that UID is a really powerful concept for just storing data for your user. Yep. It's you know very commonly used as, as that identity. And like I was talking about before, you can rely on that. Even if you're using anonymous auth or you're using phone or email password, you always have those UIDs to say, this is a user, I'm gonna store it, knowing that their UID is associated yep. with them. Now, what I know is that it can be difficult to, to make that judgment call you mentioned, so mm -hmm. to, to get that right set up. And are there some ways we could think about it, or are there some, some tips you could give so how to make that decision? There obviously is never that clear right or wrong, but mm -hmm. um, some ideas, or how do you approach that? Yeah, so my, my rule of thumb is I shouldn't ever load data I'm not rendering. Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm not displaying it on a page, I need to structure my data in a different way where I can fetch it. Uh, and be more specific. And I think being specific and you know using that rule of thumb of saying I'm only going to fetch what I render really helps define your structure. Because mm -hmm. you can kind of work backwards. Because with Firebase, a lot of the time you're not building a bunch of data into your database and then building a UI on top of it. Because that's traditionally what you kind of do. You have like some set and then you would build the UI second. But with Firebase, since it's so easy to write data, people build up the UI, they build up the Angular app, and they start writing data from the app. Yeah. And as you're doing that, you can say, all right, I'm, I'm writing it back, and now I'm pulling it back into my app, but I really have some use case where I need a room's title, and I need the data was created, yeah. but I don't need messages. So that's a situation where you want to step back and say, all right, is storing this all in one location the most reasonable? Or should I have something like slash rooms, uh, you know, rooms, dash metadata or something mm -hmm. and have under that just those two fields that I want of title and uh, you know created because that way I, I now have a specific location I can look at that has the exact data I need um, and so as you're building your application just always keeping that in mind that you don't want to fetch what you're not going to render uh, it, it kind of just exposes itself yeah. uh, the big issues with these are with this methodology is that you might not always know how you're going to display it, right? Like if I'm building an application and I find out six months after I finished it that, well, I really need this different yeah, view of point. my data, this is a situation that Cloud Functions really helps out with. Because mm -hmm. what you can do now is use Cloud Functions to build basically views of your data. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you'd write a little function and you'd have like rooms and you'd say, all right, every time somebody writes to uh, one of these keys, then go and maintain this other structure for mm -hmm. me. So make rooms meta, put it with the same key, and just store title and create it. So that you're doing that, you're writing it, and it's being stored there, but then it's super easy to consume on the cloud. Yeah. And you're not doing you know, any, anything complex there, you're just reading and writing a couple of fields, but now you have a really, really efficient uh, way to read that. And that's a kind of a more general theory, even separate from Firebase, that is like optimized for reads. Yeah. Because people are going to read content in your app a thousand times more than they'll ever create it. Yeah. It's just the nature of, of applications. So uh, using Cloud Functions to build up different views and things like that is a really powerful tool to keep that flexibility even after you've really you know defined your structure and hardened it in. Yeah, and in general, a good idea to also kind of get some code out of like your front end where it doesn't really belong. If you want to store something, you can even make like 10 SDK calls and write the different pieces mm -hmm. and use the results you get back from each callback. Or you just make the one call or the two which are really related to your front end yep. and let Cloud Functions do the rest. Right? Just... Absolutely, yeah. And it works really, really well. And it allows you to have just one, you know, main chat object. Like you, this is a, the chat room object. Yeah. And I will write to that, and as soon as I write to that, it kicks off a function, renders different views, updates my profile to say, oh, I last talked in this chat at this time, and does all of that. So your client-side logic stays super simple. It's one write, but you get all this rich data being yeah. written and spread out across your yeah. Firebase. Super useful. Um, there's one other thing which is pretty useful because now we talked about these example structures, mm -hmm. but obviously there is also a place to read about it and that's documentation which kind of explains the, the, the things we also covered like we're having different rooms and structured and you can basically read a little bit there to, to get some ideas or if that was uh, too quick or you want to dive deeper into that so that's also a good good resource but in the end it's also just practicing right so, yeah. and you will probably hit the point where your application 
patches stay that it does need or the other way around. And I think important thing to keep in mind maybe is that it doesn't cost you more to add more nodes or more top level domain. In, yeah. in any end, of course, storing more costs you more, but if it's, you split it up, it does cost you more. Yeah, yeah like the, the amount of dupli- the, the amount of cost of duplicating something, even at a ton of locations, is, is just not that yeah. much. Um, and it's going to be way more performant if your app if, for your app. If every time you look and you pull that data, it's exactly what you need yeah. to render, it's going to be super fast. Yeah, because that's something which can be challenging, especially if you have a SQL background. Because, because there you mm-hmm. try to come up with a schema where everything is as has as less redundancy as possible. Yep. You want to have it's one exactly table opposite. which manages one thing and never want to have duplicate data. Mm-hmm. right? And, and that's kind of the important switch you have to make in your head. That now it's okay to have some redundancy. Yep. Yeah, it is. And it's, you know, normalization, denormalization, all these, you know, classic database concepts. We do kind of flip them on their head here. And it's because Firebase Real-Time Database is fundamentally a different type of database. Uh, and it's not just different in terms of how you interact with it, but it's it's different on a technical level when, you, when you're thinking about building on top of it. So, uh, yeah, a lot of those classic SQL rules just don't apply anymore. And, like, if you're using SQL, definitely do those things. But in Real-Time Database... We make use of the fact that storage is cheap and we, we build structures that have duplicated data. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. So I think a nice next step is to look at the rules then. Because yeah. rules obviously another super important feature because what you could wonder right now is that we have ways to store data, we know how to structure it, but how do we actually make sure that we only store the data we want to store and yeah. that only the people who are or users who are allowed to store data well are able to. So yeah. we'll have a look at this in another video then. Fantastic.